Hey there, this is me and Rocket, and Rocket and I are preparing to fly to Lock Haven, birthplace of this beautiful plane, uh, 901 Pop, a 1962 Comanche. But just to make it interesting, we're going to fly in this plane, a 1946 Air Coupe, in part to pay tribute to the 100th anniversary of the uh, airmail service. And while it's uh, not rag and tube. It does have fabric wings and we'll be flying low uh, 1,500, 2,000 feet, take in the scenery and enjoy some of the sights. And hopefully we'll uh, make it not too exciting. Right, Rocket? Anyway, let's get going. Still the 5,000 taxiing runway 32, Max. So the original route between uh, Boston and New York ran uh, straight line from um, Boston to uh, Brunswick, New Jersey, uh, landing uh, with uh, an alternate airfield at Brainerd uh, Airport, which still exists in Hartford. And while Brainerd's a perfectly fine airport, it's kind of lies in an industrial area. So we're going to take uh, the pilot's prerogative, as pilots always uh, have done. And we're going to head to uh, Goodspeed Airport uh, on the yes, Connecticut sir, River. It's a scenic little airport, has a lot of history in it of its own. And uh, from there, the, we will then uh, fly uh, back uh, to get back on course. So, uh, we'll talk to you in a bit. Rock Island, traffic, red Cessna.
maintain Kind of cool. Delta out of seven. And actually, it's still listed on the map as Bethany Airport. Uh, and you'd be hard pressed to try and get a plane in there now. Okay, here we are flying down southbound over the Hudson along uh, the skyline of Manhattan slide by. River traffic, silver and yellow air to Freedom Tower, 900, that's that. to find landmarks uh, that exist now as they did back then. So we're flying along a, a thing called Penn's Creek here. And they're looking for a big covered bridge. I don't see a big covered bridge. I see a, a regular bridge that goes over the creek. Um, back in a, maybe that was where the covered bridge was. It's very hard to say, but this is Pence Creek, and uh, we're sort of flying along the, between the ridges, and it's, again, really hard to imagine these guys flying along this, struggling to find landmarks, when the world looks like so different, almost indistinct in a lot of ways. Um, We'll keep flying, on, and uh, if I do see a covered bridge, I'll clue you in. In the meantime, I'm just maintaining heading, uh, headed across ridge to ridge, and uh, they say, uh, or at least uh, my fourth flight says, we should be there in maybe 30 minutes. Hey, we're here uh, at the end of the runway at Beltsville. We're going to be departing for Belafonte. Had a fine night, a lot of very friendly people, and uh, the kind of place you'd like to come back to. You fly along and uh, get a sense as you can sort of go from ridge to ridge, from valley to valley. Just how harrowing it <laughs> must have been way back when, especially if like the tops of some of these ridges were obscured by clouds. Because, uh, and you look, Pennsylvania is pretty wild. I mean, there is not a lot to civilization to go down into if you were to uh, lose in power uh, over one of these ridges. So, uh, I think I understand it when a lot of these guys were uh, more afraid flying the airmail than they were uh, doing... Uh, Air combat in World War One. So uh, I don't know. Gives you a new respect for them. Okay, we're going to let you see the uh, final approach here into Belafonte. A once famous Belafonte, now which has uh, sunk into obscurity. But here we go. Third final. This is a place uh, where it all sort of started, uh, or part of it started. I 
kind of think that uh, there must have been a reason that the uh, Commerce Department or Postal Service put all these uh, airports out in the middle of nowhere. I kind of guess it has to do with public relations and safety, because uh, they didn't really want to, uh, you know, scare everybody uh, every time a plane crashed and be bad, bad PR. Anyway, I got to pay attention. technical issue uh, at the, uh, on the ground at Belafonte and that my oil dipstick had come loose and uh, somehow become broken. Luckily the uh, airport retirator had a uh, spare one on hand so we're good to go. Uh, another problem, uh, you might call it a technical difficulty, certainly one not experienced by uh, the old Pioneer pilots, but my cell phone uh, went flying out the window when I was uh, trying to take a picture, uh, I stuck my uh, hand into the uh, airstream a little too far, and whoop, there she goes. Uh, I, uh, I have a picture of it sitting somewhere in a forest along one of these ridges. So uh, if anyone does find that, uh, it would be great if you uh, give me a call. Uh, had some nice pictures on it, uh, among other things. So uh, right now, we're on the lock haven for the uh, sentimental journey fly-in. Rock gets back into his position, uh, sort of curled up in my lap. Uh, so uh, I will be back in touch. Hey there. Uh, we made it back, safe and sound. Um, but as uh, so often happens in aviation, things didn't work out quite as planned after uh, losing my phone over a ridge on the way into Belafonte. <clears throat> I landed, I put fuel in the plane and checked the oil and the oil filler cap would not stay seated and no matter how much I tried I couldn't get it to, to uh, secure itself. So whether it was one of the tabs was broken or the gasket didn't fit, um, I'm not sure. But the proprietor of the place, uh, a guy named Jeff, goes, oh, I have an engine sitting in my hangar that, on a, for a plane that I haven't put together. Uh, I'll lend you that dipstick and uh, you can use it and just send it back to me when your trip's over with. And uh, so we put it on and we both gave it a tug and it seemed seated and I flew on from Belafonte to Lock Haven for the sentimental journey fly-in. And once there, I parked, I met a friend, um, we had lunch, and after registering and paying my entry fee, I uh, walked back to the plane and was uh, beginning to unpack um, when a neighbor came up and said, oh, where are you from? And I say, oh, I'm near from Boston, Massachusetts. He goes, oh, well, the weather's changed there uh, for tomorrow. And uh, sure enough, between the time when I had my phone the, that morning, when it was forecasting partly cloudy skies for the next day, it was for low ceilings and IFR. So uh, uh, Rocket and I had to pack things up and uh, head out. Um, I needed fuel and uh, the air show fuel trucks were running way behind. So I decided to just fire up the plane and, and head to nearby Williamsport to get fuel and then head on home. As it as it turns out, um, <clears throat> after taking off, landing at Williamsport, I was marshaled into uh, uh, a parking place and the line guy goes, the side of your plane is covered with oil. And uh, it's like, that was a surprise to me. We open up the engine compartment and the oil filler cap on the uh, borrowed um, cap had come loose and was still in the engine compartment, but 
uh, about a quarter of oil had spilled out of the compartment and all along the side of the plane. So while I was wiping down the plane and one of the line guys was taking care of Rocket, uh, the mechanic uh, worked on making the, uh, uh, putting a new fresh gasket and working on the tabs to make sure that the uh, oil filler cap would stay secured. And uh, he'd, after that was done, I took off and three and a half hours later, Rocket and I landed here safe and sound. And kind of as an interesting side note, um, had I gotten gas at Lock Haven and continued flying with the loose oil filler cap, I might have ended up like my phone on top of one of those Pennsylvania ridges. So um, it's always interesting um, about how things work in aviation and things like that. You try not to think about too much because if you did, you'd probably quit flying. But overall, it was a successful trip, and uh, Rocket uh, is a very good uh, co-pilot and good company, and uh, I think we have a future in this. Anyway, thanks a bunch, and uh, see you soon.